My happy married life didn't last long. We have been married two years. I still have feelings towards my husband, and I spend every day devoting my time to him. I want him to continue to see me as attractive, so I always take care of myself and try to look good. However, I find out that my husband is having an affair. She's the love of my life. I want a divorce. One afternoon, I had believed my husband John was at work, but he suddenly came home with his lover. Divorce papers are in his hands. Since when? Um, since after the trip that we went on last year. His lover is sitting there with no expression on her face. When John says trip, he's probably referring to our honeymoon. We hadn't been able to go, so when I received an expected bonus, John said he wanted to go. So we made the decision at the last minute. Of course, I was the one that paid for it. According to John, his ex-girlfriend and current lover reached out to him during our honeymoon, and that is when he realized he still had feelings for her. What on earth are you talking about? We were on our honeymoon. There's no point saying that now. I love her. She needs me too. It's just we were a little late in realizing how we feel about each other. I do like you, but she's the one that I truly love. You've got to understand. How can I? How did he think I would sign the divorce papers? What about how I feel? John sighs as if he doesn't know what to do, and says, "You find someone better. You probably don't want to stay in this house anymore either. We'll live here. So you pack your stuff and leave in about a week." It's as if he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. He's the one who asked me out and proposed to me, and now he's the one who is going to dump me. He took no responsibility for anything all throughout our marriage, and I have a sense that all my feelings towards him are suddenly disappeared, without even a word of apology from John. I signed the divorce papers. With this. My husband and his lover leave the house. We'll come back next week, so be out by then," he said. I feel like the inside of me is freezing. All of it is so sudden that I don't even shed a tear. And rather than feeling betrayed, I feel I have been deceived, which makes me feel so bad for myself and the situation I am in. The next day. I ask a friend to help gather all my belongings and return to my parents' house because I work as a nurse. While John is not paid so well at his company, I was the one paying most of the living expenses. Although I am shocked at John's having an affair and the divorce, I won't have to pay the rent anymore, which I am going to consider a great benefit in this situation. I've decided where I'm going to live, and I am packing my stuff again to leave my parents' house. Kathy, um, Jones here," says my mother. "It's raining outside, so I let him in." She looks at me apologetically. "What on earth does my ex-husband want with me after all this time?" He said, "I'm not the love of his life." So he can't be here to ask for me to come back. Is that the case? Does he want money? I feel it's rude to be making such an assumption. But considering how much he spent and how he complained about working while we were married, it's most natural to think that money is the reason he is here. Maybe I have something of his that he's forgotten, so I decided to go down the living room to hear what he has to say. What do you want? 
My father's voice is angry, but John is calm when he says, "I would like to talk to your daughter." You must have nerve to be calm in this situation. What do you want? I'm busy now, you know. I open the door to face him, hoping this is going to be quick. And I am lost for words. There, his lover, or rather his new wife, is sitting next to him, as if it's her right to be there. Why is she here? This is my parents' house. What are you thinking? Any normal person wouldn't bring this woman here, and it's insane that she thought it was okay to come along too. Bringing his former mistress to the house that I grew up in—it's more than insulting. Calm down. His attitude and words disgust me, and the woman is silent this time as well. Can we? Please get whatever you're here for over with as soon as possible. Possibly irritated at my attitude, John has a stern look on his face. This is important. We haven't discussed division of property yet. I'm just here to receive my share. Money. Just as I thought. John looks excited. Yeah, you're right. Of course. I knew he would be here soon enough, so I was ready. I bring out my purse and hand him thirty cents. Here, this is your share. What? John and his new wife stare at the three dimes placed on the palm of his hand. What is this? He thrusts the coins on the floor. His new wife suddenly speaks up too. Are you kidding me? You can't call this property. Quit fooling around. They are both red in the face. That's all the savings that we have left. John must have thought there was more. But I calmly tell him. Unfortunately, this is reality. But he snores and looks down at me, saying, "What are you talking about? There's more. I know there is. You had two hundred thousand dollars. Hurry up and give me my share of a hundred thousand." He waves his hands around in an annoying gesture, and his wife is there next to him, nodding. I am shocked and stare at him. Not making a move. You're the one who said you want this over as soon as possible. Hand me the money then. He starts screaming and throwing things in the house around. And he's a completely different person to the man I knew. Seeing these must be his true colors. I am so happy that I got to leave him. Hearing the large sounds and shouting, my dad, who had left the room, and my brother, who just got home, enter the living room. Dad is frozen at the sight of John going crazy, but he grabs his arms and puts them around his back, stopping him from messing the room up any further. I briefly explain the situation to my brother, who is a lawyer, and because he knows about the divorce. He understands what is going on quickly enough. Joan's new wife hears our conversation and figures out that Joan is a lawyer. Hey, I never heard your ex-wife had a lawyer in the family. Her eyes are wide and she is screaming at John. I wonder why these two are so persistent about money. So, although I don't want to speak with John at all. I decide to ask John. Why do you need the money so badly? You divorced me. Because you said this woman is the woman of your dreams. You chose to be with her rather than me, and that's why you wanted me to leave. Yes, that's right. But division of property is important. 
that house we have now is, in the end, the house that you and Nala lived in together. So we want to build a new house of our own. We want children, so we need a car, and I want to take them on a nice vacation too, you know. I want to do the duties that any normal husband would do, which is why I'm here, though it's tough for me. Every reason he mentions, it's so selfish. Okay, so he didn't want to come here. I don't want him here either. He doesn't know how terrible what he did was, so he doesn't seem sorry at all. And I financially supported our marriage. Handing over my share is the least you can do to thank your dear ex-husband, don't you think? He snorts again. What did he just say? That he supported me financially? Maybe I heard wrong. John had no will of working, and he would return home from work as soon as possible because he wanted to play online games. Whenever he didn't feel like it, he would take a day off. So he'd use up all his paydays off soon enough that he'd have to pretend he was ill. He had no will of earning more money, and he took full advantage of the fact that I was a nurse and was paid well. As for living expenses, he handed me hundred dollars several times when he felt like it. But to be honest, it was like he was an unemployed boyfriend who just lived in their girlfriend's apartment without doing anything. John never did any of the housework. And maybe I could understand if he had thanked me for my hard work. But I am so disappointed by his unreasonable words of I financially supported our marriage. I was the one paying all the living expenses. How can you say that? According to what you just said then, you should actually give me back the 30 cents that I just gave you too, you know? What are you talking about? You really don't know anything, do you? Mrs. You too. I'm sure you were excited when you heard about my savings, but I have bad news for you. I am still calm and Jung and his wife glare at me. From here, my brother speaks on my behalf. Excuse me, I'm Henry Thompson and I'm a lawyer. Please allow me to explain on behalf of my sister. Only the savings made by the couple while they were married are subject to division of property. This means that any money saved up before the marriage is not. My sister saved up the $200,000 before marriage, which means that it is her own property and cannot be divided between the two of you. You only had 60 cents left in your share account. Therefore, your share is half of that, which is 30 cents. There is no point complaining about this amount. It seems my sister was saving up for your future, but I believe you spent it all on your lady sitting next to you. Henry says all this very calmly, and John and his wife are shocked. But, he tries to strike back though. What I just said, I said as Catherine's brother. But please allow me to speak now, as her attorney. My client has requested you pay her a compensation. Why have you not made this payment? Exactly. I had requested the compensation, but John had only paid me partially. And I wondered why the rest of my payment had not been made yet. That is why I officially asked my brother to step in between us. My actual lawyer is his colleague, but we had not expected John to come here today. So, Henry is acting on my lawyer's behalf. 
with Henry's razor sharp gaze and words, John and his wife turned silent. You ask for your share. Since you were the one who had an affair, you were the cause of the divorce. I do not believe it makes sense for you to ask for any amount. It seems as you were spending all the money that my sister had been saving up for the two of you too. And my sister's request is that you return the total amount that you owe her, as well as paying the compensation. That's impossible! Honey, let's stop this. We can't push this any further. John is standing up and kicking the table, and his wife tries to hold him down. When Henry will not budge and mentions the word court, it seems John has given up and he starts speaking the truth. After the divorce, it seems he was fired. And since his wife is unemployed too, they started borrowing money. As a result, they now have so much debt that they can't pay the compensation. When they were trying to come up with a way to earn money, they remembered my savings. They thought I would give them half the amount if they mentioned division property. I am shocked and speechless when they changed their attitude 180 degrees and begged me to help them. Next to me, my brother is shaking his head, indicating that I shouldn't listen to them. I don't feel any empathy for them at all and tell them they still need to pay me back the compensation and my savings. I then ask my brother and father to see them out. These past few hours were like a storm. My mom comes back into the room with a sigh of relief and starts cleaning up. My dad is furious saying, what a terrible man, and helps her. My brother wraps my back. You did nothing wrong. What you did today, and the divorce itself too. You should be confident, he says comforting me. He adds that we need to make sure they pay the compensation. And he calls his colleague right away. All of us at the law firm are on your side, he says. I'm exhausted, mom. You did a great job. Why don't we all go out to have steak tonight? To make ourselves feel better? I collapse onto my mom, hugging her. My dad and brother agreed to going out. So we have a wonderful time for dinner that night. Later, with the help of my brother, his colleague, and the law firm, the compensation and used savings are being returned. John and his wife seem to have no luck with job interviews. And I hear they have ended up working several part-time jobs each. It's not like they'll be buying a house or a car or go on vacation for a while. It seems they are finally grateful to me after experiencing the life they have now. So when we see each other on the street, they politely say hello to me. I feel so much better seeing that they have at least made this slight progress. As for me, I am currently in a steady relationship with the attorney that worked for me on this case. Henry is happy saying that this man is perfect for me. One year after the divorce, I am thinking to introduce my new boyfriend to my parents soon. I am sure they will be very happy for me. The reason why I feel this way is because when my ex-husband mentioned the love of his life, I didn't really understand what he was saying. But now, I feel that maybe this man truly is the love of my life.